<laughs> well, hello. <laughs> Welcome to the ASP Nut Community Stand Up. I'm joined by Beth. McKinnon was here and as the countdown was going and then just disappeared. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Um, hopefully he's on his way soon. So Beth, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much, John. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, it's been a while, actually. So I'm excited to kind of talk through some of the stuff we want to do for Blazor Hybrid and .NET 9. Very, very cool. All right. Let me ping. Um, I'm going to ping McKinnon just a sec. Uh, Power see. outage. Uh, Okay, well, what I'm thinking we maybe should do is just pop over to your stuff, okay. and then we can, if McKinnon shows up, then we'll do the community links at the end, and it'll all work out. That sounds so, great. Okay, sure. cool. Should I share your screen then? Yeah, go for it. I have all some right. slides and, and a demo and stuff, so yeah, so awesome. thanks for having me. If uh, folks don't know me, my name's Beth Massey. I'm a product manager on the .NET MAUI team, and um, I'm the PM for Blazor Hybrid inside of .NET MAUI. Um, so today, uh, I just kind of wanted to, oh, there's McKinnon, who's that? Yeah. Did you My want to went out. regular order? Like, like, um, oh, you know um, like, like with the community links? Yeah, because yeah. he's, he's here now. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Let me reshare my screen and everything. <laughs> I just got through my name anyways. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair. <laughs> oh, okay. Sounds good. Okay, I think all I have right, it set up. Here we go. Have okay, all right. Um, so, hello. I'm not sure how much of the introductions happened, but I'm McKinnon. Um, I'm a developer on the Blazor team. Um, we start off these streams with these, uh, what we call community links, which are um, interesting things happening in the community around the Blazor slash .NET slash like ASP.NET space. So, um, so the link should be in the description of wherever you're, wherever you're watching this. And so I'm just going to go through those right now. First, we have a new version of Blazor Eyes uh, that is available. And this has like a lot of new interesting features. So one is they have a Fluent UI2 theme provider, um, which, is, which is like pretty cool, I think. Um, it has, has like new, you know, colors and styles and icons too. So um, so that's like a pretty interesting addition. There's also, um, there also is like the Blazor Fluent UI component library, which is a separate thing, but now they're adding something similar to, um, to Blazor Eyes. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, they also have like some new components. So they have a toast component, for example. Uh, so if you need like a notification that comes up in the corner of your website, uh, that works and you can kind of see what that looks like. So nice. lots of interesting new little things there. Um, some performance improvements as well. So if you're using Blazor Eyes, upgrade to the new version um, because version 1.5 is out. Wow. So um, cool. yeah, there's that one. Um, we also have <laughs> a, a really interesting project, Pac-Man Blazor, uh, which is, I mean, it's self-explanatory. It's Pac-Man written <laughs> in Blazor, Blazor WebAssembly. And um, when I first saw this, I was like, is this really like written in Blazor or is it like they're rendering a script and then the rest is in JavaScript? But no, actually like, almost all the like actual logic of the game is, is C sharp and the JavaScript is just there for like interop. Um, wow. So I thought it was like just a cool little like interesting way to use Blazor. Occasionally I'll show like a game on one of these community links just because it's like, I just think it's so cool to make like these crazy, like pushing the boundaries of, of what Blazor WebAssembly can do. And actually it's it's literally just, just Pac-Man. It's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Let's turn off the audio there. But I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm awesome. not going to spend time playing it, but exactly. like, actually, yeah. it's, it's just, yeah, <laughs> it's just right back, man. I don't know. I just thought that was so cool. So, yeah, there's that. Um, cool project if you want to make something similar and need a reference. Okay. So, uh, next we have another component library update um, from Dev Express. This is a, like, this is a blog covering an early access preview of, of a new version of Dev Express. And it's just amazing how many new, like how how complete some of these component libraries are. Um, they have a tree list, a full on HTML editor, um, like like a fancier file input component than the one that's built in. Uh, you know, toast components like like the one we just saw, drawers, maps, um, charts. It, it's just crazy. It feels like it has almost everything you'd ever need to build any website ever. So 
Um, anyways, there's a there's a early access preview of um, of this component library that's out. Um, if you want to give that a try as well. Okay, next we have remotely, and this is a pretty popular project. So I'm I'm not sure why I haven't heard of it before, but it was written using .NET, Blazor, and Signalr, and it's it's essentially like a remote like a remote control solution for like controlling another desktop. Um, so if you have like a business and you need to like remote into like a client's computer or something and take control over it, um, maybe you have like an IT company or something like that, um, then this is this is like a really cool, interesting open source tool that can help with that kind of thing. And there's a there's a YouTube tutorial linked from the README here, and uh, and it shows how to like you know get it set up and and this whole like configure uh, configuration dashboard is written in Blazor, which is which maybe you can tell by the gradient on the side. But nice. um, yeah. anyways, so it's 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 a pretty cool. Uh, Pretty cool open source project that um, that has like a lot of engagement from the community. It seems like so. Um, yeah, wow. I just thought that was really that was really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then finally we have a social media network written in Blazor WebAssembly called I, I think you pronounce it Blazot, Bla Blaze it. I don't know, but <laughs> don't know. It, it's it's kind of like a Twitter, Facebook kind of thing. Um, I haven't I haven't used it too much. I actually just couldn't account this morning. But uh, but but it's like a pretty fully featured um, like social media platform. Um, you can like you know you can like stuff. So I'm liking Daniel Roth's recent post about a design proposal for a new Blazor feature, um, and uh, and yeah, it's you have themes too, so you can go to configuration, change what theme you're in, stuff like that. I don't know. So it's it's a uh, cool. yeah yeah yeah. And it's, you it's, know, it's my using Blazor WebAssembly. My first exposure to this is um, Jeff Fritz has built that tags app and um, the developer on this project contacted him to integrate that. And I think did some pull requests to do that. It's, it's, it's yeah, pretty slick. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I think that about covers it for the community links. Um, All right. Yeah, so I guess pretty we can cool. move on to the main part of the show. Okay. All right. So Beth. All right. Switch back to you. Okay, here we go. Okay, cool. Take so two. I already introduced myself. McKinnon, I'm Beth Massey. <laughs> you missed that part. Um, yeah, let's talk about um, some of the work we want to do um, with Blazor and Hybrid, uh, with Blazor Hybrid and .NET 9. Um, before we get into that, though, um, I want to just kind of like level set everybody and make sure everybody knows what hybrid apps are and, and why would you choose to build them. Um, they're really just a blend of native and web technology. Uh, you, you typically use, like build the core UI with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then that's wrapped in like a native app container. Um, this allows you to get access to the native platform features and device hardware that may be hard to do on the web alone. Um, and it can mean mobile or desktop devices. Um, so what's kind of cool about like the best benefit, I think, about um, hybrid apps is really be being able to reuse your code, like your UI code, across device platforms and web. OK, so some examples of, of this out in the wild is Electron for desktop. Um, like VS Code is built on Electron and Ionic uh, for mobile. Those are two examples of, of hybrid um, technologies. For .NET developers, though, um, we've got choices for building client apps, right? So whether or not we want a full reach of the web or the depth of, of native experiences. So on one side, we have Blazor, right? So Blazor is used for building you know, websites, PWAs, any kind of web application um, with C Sharp. And on the other end, we have .NET MAUI, which is really about building native apps for um, Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android um, with you know, rich native um, device experiences. But this is a sliding scale, right? So you can actually build, um, you can build a Blazor uh, UI that runs it on the native apps themselves. And then actually, in addition to this, you can structure your solution so that you can run your UI on the Blazor web app as well as the Maui native app. And that's what I'm going to kind of show you guys um, how to do today. And then what we're trying to do in .NET 9 to make it easy, even easier to get started with that type of project. Okay. 
All right. So at the core, Blazor hybrid apps are really uh, rendered through a Blazor WebView, which is a control in the .NET MAUI stack that um, basically surfaces the platform web views for all of the different devices. So like on WinUI, that would be WebView 2. Um, so this gives you access to um, like all the MAUI abstraction layer, which abstracts all of the device specific things that you might want to do, which so that's really nice. Um, the, there's no, no internet required to run your app itself. The UI itself, the web UI is packaged with the app and distributed with the app. Um, so this gives you access to the stores, right? So if you need um, more reach um, via you know, your Apple or, or Google Play stores, you've got it. All right. Um, and it really at the end of the day, it's just the Razor components, right? And we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you kind of how um, we can build these so that they work on both. I think Beth just, yeah. That was one of the first like mental hurdles I had to get over on this because I was assuming it was like it was serving a web app, like it was basically like hosting a browser for me. But what you're showing here is that it's you're writing your UI using web components, but you you know like web technologies, but it's actually running completely locally on on your device. Correct. Right. There's no like HTTP client or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you need to go to the web, you go to the web for data or whatever you need, you do. But like the UI itself is packaged with the app. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. that's what makes it snappy and that's what makes it native. Right? At the end of the day, it's it's a native application. It's not a web application. Um, so it, it, it is kind of like a mental mental hurdle sometimes to kind of bridge bridge both <laughs> worlds. Yeah. That, that's kind of one of the things. I mean, there, there's always going to be sort of these edges, like, you know, I'm in the web world writing my UI, and now I'm in the Maui world writing, you know, like the the non-visual code that that the Maui, Maui provides me, right? Like, you know, access mm -hmm. to the file system or whatever I need. Okay. So what are we looking at for .NET 9? Um, there, it just from in MAUI itself, MAUI hybrid apps, I'm going to say MAUI hybrid apps because we're looking at um, an, uh, also another scenario that doesn't involve Blazor. Obviously, Blazor's in the box with dot, since .NET 6, Blazor's been in the box uh, with MAUI. Um, so we'll continue investing in hybrid apps with Blazor. And today I want to walk you through the solution template idea that we've got um, for .NET 9. We also, um, you know, uh, Blazor hybrid apps benefit from everything that Blazor does, all the tooling Blazor gets, as well as all the tooling Maui gets. So we're really working on hot reload, a lot of inner loop improvements in Visual Studio. Um, Desktop scenarios are super important. I mean, um, especially like with WinUI, our partners in Windows, our partners in Edge with the WebView. These are very important scenarios. And working with teams within other divisions within Microsoft is one of you know one of my jobs to make sure that they understand our desktop scenarios and make that really shine. Um, tooling, we're building the VS Code Maui extension, so that also provides the Blazor hybrid um, project type. So you'd be able to use VS Code to build Blazor hybrid apps. Um, also more, doc more documentation. We know that there's a lot of just, you know, how do I do X and Y? How do I work with XAML and web at the same time? Best practices, how do I deploy stuff? There's a lot of documentation that we're tracking um, for, for um, .NET 9 Blazor hybrid. But we also are trying to enable hybrid apps with JavaScript front ends as well, so that you could reuse any Angular, React, Vue, these kinds of JavaScript frameworks you might have um, investments already um, in, your, you know, in your business. Um, and be able to um, realize that through a hybrid web view. So we've got an experiment running. Um, Alon Lipton is one of the um, principal engineers on the Maui team that does everything web view. So he actually is uh, the web view guy. Like he does all the Blazor stuff as well as this Maui hybrid web view that we really want to get in box. So give it a shot. We've been getting a lot of good feedback on that. Um, I'm not going to talk about that today, but just so you know, this is kind of where Maui hybrid apps are kind of headed. Okay, cool, cool guys. Okay, we yep. won't talk. We won't talk about other JavaScript today. We're talking about all <laughs> all Blazor all the way. All right. So um, today, you know, you can build Blazor apps and Maui apps that share the same UI. It's just you have to set this up manually yourself, right? You need to create a Blazor web app. You create a hybrid app, a Maui hybrid app. And then you use a Razor class library and you, you share the UI, you create project references, you have to hook all this stuff up. There's a lot of like glue code that you have to write. 
in a various files, okay, today, but you can do it, all right? So basically you end up with three projects in your solution or four, depending on if you have like a Blazor Wasm or just a Blazor server, um, and you can set this all up yourself, okay? And a lot of customers are actually doing this today already. So when they, you know, when I talk to customers, I'm like, hey, you know, are you using the, are you, are you doing web too with your hybrid? They're like, of course we are, why wouldn't we? We wanna have the maximum reach. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So this is actually happening fairly commonly. It's also been asked for by, I think, our customers on GitHub and that sort of stuff too. So we have a lot of feedback. So in order to um, to do this with .NET 8, I created a, you know, a GitHub repository that I'll walk you through today um, that basically wires up this project, Blazor Web Project, a Maui hybrid project, and the Razor Class library. It contains a sample code that we're all used to, the weather page, the counter page, the home page, but it also shows how to set up a shared component as well as an interface for, um, for just showing how you would put different implementations for the web and for the native devices. Um, so just it shows the form factor in this screenshot here. It's just saying you're running on and th that stuff is running inside of each of the clients. Um, but it shows how that how to kind of structure your app so that you can get at that code in the UI, the shared UI. For .NET 8, it also sets up a interactive render settings class. Um, so this is so you can use the um, render modes that Blazor and .NET 8 provide. Um, so the web app can specify these rendering modes and they're ignored in the hybrid app. And this is because hybrid apps are always interactive, okay? The, the uh, rendering modes make no sense on a client, okay? Um, on a, you know, device. So. So in this case, we just kind of set up this sort of middle class that kind of intercepts the rendering modes inside of the Razor class library. And what we do inside of the Maui app is we just set them to null, okay? So luckily null mean, means null in the framework, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. That was lucky. Um, and, and, and this is something we're looking at in .NET 9 as, as, as changing that behavior um, so that you, we won't have to have this, this class set up in between, okay? So, um, okay, cool. So let's, let's pop over and let me uh, demo this for you. So let me go to, before we go into Visual Studio, I just want to take a look at the uh, GitHub repository here. And it it's basically has all these instructions, like for instance, the server mode global. So there are seven different combinations of um, what, where you want the, uh, rend where you want the rendering modes, either per page component or global, and then how, which rendering mode you want, server, Interactive server, what is it? Interactive server, interactive web assembly, and there's one more, I forget. Uh, McKinnon, what's the third one? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. Right. There's two of them. Auto. Yeah, you're auto. talking about randomness. There's, there's yeah, 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 auto. yeah, server web assembly, yeah. auto. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I just remember. So, anyways, th this repository, I wrote the, the, the instructions here if you manually want to set up the solution yourself. Okay. I don't know. There's like 39 steps here. It's, <laughs> nice. I don't know, like 25 steps maybe, but like this, this literally, if you wanted to do this yourself, if you use the interactivity location as global, then you don't actually have to use the pattern provided in here with that class. If it's just, if it's just set as global, then it's just set only on the web application, then it, you don't have to worry about it. But if you're doing per page component kind of rendering modes and all the different cool rendering modes you could possibly do, you're going to need to implement the pattern shown in this, in this repository for .NET 8. Okay. All right. So, and I linked to the issue that we're planning on um, working on for .NET 9 here. To, so it'll ignore it for the Blazor hybrid apps. All right, so th this is a lot of wire up. I'm not like gonna go through everything, but you know, there's a lot you have to kind of do to get that, not just, a, it's not just a project reference. You actually have to add the additional assemblies and you have for the shared Razor class library. And there's a lot of little things you have to tweak. Um, and then it's so kind of- are, yeah. are you saying that it's, uh, there's all these steps here, I can go through and do this manually or I can clone your repo and work from there? Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. And uh, what what I got here is all of the different the branches here show all of the different combinations. All right, so like if okay. I wanted to show, like here's WebAssembly per page component, and then the README changes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Wow. All right. So well, yeah, see, PMs do work sometimes. Look, see. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And so anyway, a lot of this, a lot of the steps are sim very similar. It's just that, for instance, with per page component, you're going to end up with um, like 
uh, this at the top of the counter razor page because the counter is interactive. It needs to be, you know, it needs to run interactively, whether it's on WebAssembly or server. Okay. So mm -hmm. if you're doing per page component, that's sort of the thing that it does. If it's global, it's, it's in the app razor. So anyways, this is the sort of stuff you would do manually today. Okay. That walks you through each different combination. All right. Or just like I said, clone. All right. Let's go over here into, um, into Visual Studio. Okay. So quick question, Beth. Yeah. We've got a few questions so far. Yeah. Do you mind if we take some of those questions yeah, first? Let's do it. Before? Okay. So the first and most important one, Cecil's asking, is that a transistor radio on Beth's couch and does it work? <laughs> um, yeah, it is actually. Hey, Cecil, how you doing, dude? <laughs> Okay, moving on. Um, so question here, is this like an iframe for devices leveraging web views? So I, I guess conceptually, maybe. I, I don't know if that's really the right um, terminology, I would say. But yeah, it, it uses the platform web view, but you're in a MAUI application already. So you'll see, you know, there's there you can mix XAML and, and native controls with the web view. So the web view is just another control that MAUI gives you. So it's not really an iframe at all. It's literally a, a native control. Um, I, I think, and part of the reason I started this or picked this question is because like that's, again, like I was originally thinking like, with an iframe, you give it a URL and it's pulling information from a server. And here it's not doing that. Like you said, it's a native control, so it's running right. something. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Fendal asking, would you say that an existing Blazor WASM only application could be easily basically lift and shift extended to be hosted inside of Maui? Um not necessarily. It depends on what you're doing, because the the hosting model is it's totally different in Blazor Wasm versus native. And it's actually easy in native. It's just native. It's like you can do, mm. like it's stateful. It's yeah. on the device. Uh, Blazor Wasm is like, it took me a long time to get my head around that hosting model. It's pretty complicated. So depending on what you're doing, like if it's the UI itself, mm -hmm. Probably just fine, but depends on what you're doing. Like if you're, you're, you know, are you accessing local storage? That's like one line of code in Maui, and that's like yeah. pretty complicated in 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 WebAssembly. So it, the functionality of the app would be need to be changed, but the UI, perhaps you could, yeah, just lift and shift that. Okay, got two more questions for you, and this one maybe for to take at the end or whatever. But are there Microsoft tutorials for this idea, of Blazor Maui? Yeah, there actually are. There's like, okay. and James Montemagno has a whole series for just oh, Blazor Hybrid right. and Gerald Resuvius has been trying, yeah. Resilius, how do you say his last name? I don't remember. Anyway, Thanks. Gerald. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like also getting into Blazor Hybrid. There's a ton of content out there. And yeah, I'll, I'll leave some links with you um, after the show. Cool, okay. All right, uh, last one. I believe we can embed WebView 2 within a WinForms app to do sort of a Blazor Hybrid app. Are any of these changes going to apply to that scenario? Yes, you can. You can use Blazor Hybrid applies to MAUI, uh, WinForms, and WPF. Um, so yes, you can. Um, th this, this, the way you set it up is different, though. Like the, the control is there, but the way you set it up is different. Um, like McKinnon, you probably know more than me on on the WinForm side. On in WPF, you use a dependency. You use dependency mm -hmm. injection, but you have to like. Right. Grab some new get packages and be able to kind of set it up to do that. On um, WinForms, I think I'm, I'm assuming it's similar. It's just a different control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have a a. I don't think there's like a WinForms Blazor Hybrid template, but we do have a docs page that explains how to like create a WinForms app and then add like kind of yeah. a Blazor Hybrid setup to it. So, yeah. yeah. Same and, yeah. and this is like when I first heard that, I was like, why would you do that? But I've heard this is actually a, like a migration scenario. People take yeah. a large WinForm app and they'll migrate like basically a control at a time, convert it to Blazor. Pretty soon, your whole app's running in Blazor controls and then you know, flip the exactly. switch and you're running in Maui or running as a Blazor app. So Yeah, that's actually a, a, a good way to look at it. Or just extending, like maybe wanting to modernize or maybe take advantage of some of the assets that you might already have in house, you know, like a lot yeah. of web developers are in enterprises too. And, you know, like, mm -hmm. like WinForms is like, uh, ancient technology, but still absolutely relevant today and being worked on by our team. So, yeah. you know, to be supported. So 
um, yeah, that's a, that's definitely an option. One of our highest viewed um, presentations from .NET Conf this past year was on WinForms. Yeah, Miranda, God, like, did I'm, it, I'm it, originally it, a WinForms developer myself. Yep, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll let you get back to your demo. I just wanted to ask the questions while they were still fresh. Yeah, those are great questions. Those are great questions. Okay. Um, yeah. So I just flipped over to the branches here. So look, I showed you the branches in the GitHub repository here. They're all right here. Um, you'll see that, yeah, there's three, there's three projects for, this is the global uh, server, you know, interactive server global uh, location. So we have three projects with that one. Um, oops. And back. And for, uh, let's go. So say WebAssembly per page component. Um, you'll notice WebAssembly, you, you get four projects now, okay? So there's a difference there. Um, like I said, there's seven different combinations. Um, so whoever's building this template is going to have a really good, actually, Alon's building this template, and he's going to have a real good time <laughs> on the combo. <laughs> 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 like I had all a good time with the readmes. So. Right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, those are complicated, right? Getting the yeah. like run through the dialogue and selecting the template. Exactly. So, like one of the one of the things here in global, you'll see that the rendering mode is specified here globally, right? In the this is the app dot razor, okay, file. So this is render mode interactive web assembly. If you were just going to stick with global rendering modes, you don't need to. You, well, I'm going to show you this pattern for this class. You don't need to set all that up. You could do that today and and party on. Um, when you start looking at um, per page component, that's when we're going to need um, a class to help you out. So let, let's just fire this up and actually show you kind of how this works. I, I have a, a, an Android phone sitting over here, too. So we can actually look at the, the well, that's starting. You can actually look at the app here. You'll see that it's got a, a component, you know, laid right on top of the home page as the example. This is the sample that we're considering uh, distributing. Um, you'll see that, you know, actually I can use this. You'll see it go into the counter um, and click me interactive. Um, it's working just fine. This is per page component and it's not throwing an error. Okay. So the, normally it would be throwing an error if we weren't using the pattern that's in, in this repository. Um, oh, okay. So while that fires up, we're firing up the web and the and the uh, the Windows app. So let's get that going. Here comes the web app. All right. So there you go. Now you see you're running on the web, and um, this is per page component. But it's it's actually um, interactive on this page only. So when we click it, we, we see it's working. Um, and same thing with the uh, here's our Windows app loading. Now you see we're running on desktop. Okay, we got this. We even have the weather page running and stuff too. Okay, the weather page is, is its own guy doing its own thing. Um, okay, so there's all three different apps we've got going on that are working, okay? Um, that's that's basically the sample code that we're considering with this template as well in .NET 9. Um, it's your, your standard uh, Blazor stuff. Okay, let's go back to, um, to this guy. So let's see, I uh, wanna show you kind of how this is structured. So. Let me go into the shared. Shared is the Razor class library. This is all our shared UI. This sample in the components has all the UI contained inside of the shared. Okay, there is the, only the error page on on the web app is is over in the web. Okay, but everything else is shared across the Maui app and the web apps. Okay, so we've got the uh, notice the counter here. This is our per page component. Um, if we open up the counter, uh oh, hold on. My preview of Visual Studio. <laughs> this is gonna hang. I should have just gone to the counter over here. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Actually, Maybe I was something. pretty impressed with how things were keeping up so far. I ran an Android <laughs> emulator. And I, this is why I need a new laptop. All right, hold on, guys. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to kill. I'm gonna have to kill this. Yeah, unfortunately. All right. All right. Any other questions? <laughs> Uh, let me see. Well, I don't know what this means at all. Will the problem with page reloading and Blazor hybrid applications that use JavaScript scripts be fixed? Apparently a disposed problem. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah. The, oh, we might, we might need that. a more specific question to know. Yeah. Um, to answer that. Uh, okay. Let me see. I think maybe did Beth freeze? Maybe. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> I was like, that's <laughs> <Okay>. really <laughs> paying attention. Um, maybe she killed the wrong process, and there you go. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, let me see. I don't see. know. McKinnon, if there are any other questions that you would want to jump on. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking through the starred questions right now. Um, okay. Oh, actually. There's Beth. Well, we have, we have two Beths now. Yay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry, okay. guys. I, I there we go. My machine is really crashing. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let me get this set up again. Talk to I'm going to have to grab the screenshot before when we had two Beths on. That was really? pretty cool. Really? Yeah, it was pretty neat. <laughs> I could tell my mom I cloned myself. <laughs> oh, okay, but Michael. All right. Michael <laughs> Where was I? I was going to you a, oh, Yeah, you still have a working radio, even if your laptop dies. So that's good. I <laughs> have a working radio. Yes, yes. I can play, play my. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Um, let me let me share my screen again. Sorry, except okay. that yeah, yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, hold on. Entire screen. This. Yeah. The, this is sure. we did record a copy of this and specific right. every time I for me every time I'm <laughs> running the Android about. emulator. It's, it does a lot. Okay. All right. Is that going? Um, there it is. Hey, hey okay. <laughs> Can you guys hear me okay too? Yeah. Yep. Oh. Sorry, you guys hear me? Okay. All right. Um, layout pages. I'm going to open the counter razor. It's right here. Okay. Notice that it's here's the render mode interactive web assembly. Okay. That's where that is. Render mode is, is specified. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see that? Okay. Uh, sorry. I'm not, I might be still recovering from crashing my computer, I apologize. Um, all right, so that's where the per page component interactive web assembly is being specified for this particular branch, okay? So how do we ignore that on the hybrid side, okay? So what we do is we created a class here called interactive render settings in the, in inside of the shared uh, class class library. And you'll see okay. that it, it contains the same property names of the render mode. Okay. So when you're on the web app, you, you could copy pages from somebody else's, you know, uh, project, right. And they were using the mm -hmm. ASP.NET render mode, right. The ASP.NET core, you know, uh, core components, but you would be able, but this, this is going to intercept that. Okay. And the only time this is needed is because on the Maui side, we need to set them to null so that it ignores all of them. Okay. So this is just the way we're for .NET 8, where you could, you know, you could get away with having a bunch of render modes in the web app how you want, and then ignore them all over um, on the shared Maui app. Okay. So what nice. it, how it works is in the Maui program CS, you'll see this render mode, configure Blazor hybrid render modes. That's it. There's one line there and now everything is ignored. So your your web app behaves exactly how it would before. Okay. And it's just ignoring over here. Um, the other thing I wanted to kind of show you is the, um, let's see what else is there. I, there is a couple of, oh, the form factor, right? So this also sample code, in addition to just having the UI, I wanted to be able to actually show how you would you know, use something on a page. Like in this case, we're using inside of that component, um, we're getting the form factor of the device uh, in the case of Maui. And in the case of web, it's just the web and the environment um, variable like mm -hmm. the OS platform. Okay, so I create an interface and then we can use that interface um, on the home page. All right, I'm afraid to open the home page right now. <laughs> we're, using, uh, uh, we're using it in the component actually right here. Okay, so here it is. So I inject 
that interface and I'm just using it as an, a variable here on the, on inside of the UI. Now, in order to provide the implementation, I need to do that on the clients because there's different implementations on the clients. And so that's what's going on here in the Maui app on the services. The same thing in the web app, we have the services, right? This is the form factor, okay? Oh, so okay. This is two implementations. What's cool about the Maui is I can use the Maui abstraction layer to cover all four of those devices, you know, Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, device idiom, okay? Is, is just like desktop, phone, you know, tablet. Okay. Okay, and device info here provides the platform, that's the Android 14 or whatever it happens to be, WinUI, um, and the device version, and the version string. Okay, so that's that's kind of just a very simple like way to you know realize the, the power of Maui right here. Like this is the abstraction layer. So, except I still have web, like, right? So Maui yeah. doesn't cover the web case. So in the case of web, it's just, I'm just returning web as the form factor and I'm using the OS version, environment OS version in, a case, in this case, okay? So this is what we're considering for the, the, the sample code. This just shows you how you would, you know, provide different implementations, but be able to use that stuff in, inside of the, um, the shared Razor class library. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, right. so, so I would use this if I need to do something device specific, like, okay, I'm on Android, I need to, Link to the Google Store or whatever, you know. Or, or you know, you need to save a file to local storage. Uh, on the Maui side, you just say preferences set. Yeah. You're done. Um, but on the web, you need to do something different, right? So you okay. need to provide a different implementation. So yeah, I mean, yes, you can you you can still do like if Android, if iOS, and you can do you can do this device specific stuff just like you normally would in a Maui app. But this kind of shows you more like, hey, with Maui, you don't necessarily need to do all of that, but you do need to provide a different implementation for a completely different hosting model like the web. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's that's what this is showing. Nice. Does that make sense, John? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the simplest example I could think of that that kind of shows that. Okay. Um, the the device info is kind of handy. Um, so it also lets you know when you change, you know, um, like when you you know rotate and all kinds of stuff, um, different things like that. Okay. So specific to that, then uh, question here: Do I need to provide different device info via config or app settings. I think what you're showing here is you don't need to do any of that. It's all automatically figured out for you by the platform, right? Yeah, so device info is just a class in the Maui.devices namespace here, so that you, which you, you get for free um, in, in a Maui app. Um, okay. So it's just like part of the essentials APIs. So uh, yeah, you get like, you could think, this is, it's, this is what's hard to get around, I think people's heads or my, it was mine, it, get around my head in the beginning. Like, yes, you're using web technologies, but you're only using it for the UI itself. Everything mm -hmm. else underneath the platform is whatever platform you want, right? Or you have like, so yes, you can go, you use Maui as an abstraction layer, or you can go deeper and go into windows and Mac catalyst and you know, all that if you need to, but the web is a totally different thing, right? So at that level, at that layer, you know, Remember, your UI is drawn exactly the same across both, but everything underneath is different. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So, um, so hope that answered the question on, on that one. Um, okay. So I wanted to show you what happens like if you don't implement this um, this class, this interactive render settings. So I mentioned we were we're back in the um, Maui program .cs. Um, you'll see like here, I was like ignoring, let me, let me take that out and let's see how sad things get. Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And th this might, this might be, um, this might be, be what other folks are, these folks are running into this in the wild, right? Mm -hmm. in, in customers are running into this and they're like, what is going on? And this is because when we introduced all of the rendering modes for Blazor and .NET 8, the, they don't make sense in the hybrid scenario. And so yeah. what happens is like, it doesn't know what to do and it, it just throws an exception. Okay. okay. Um, all right. So let's, let's get this thing running again. Um, we're going to go into the windows app, the windows apps, what's going to be sad. Um, the web apps working works fine. So let's see, there's, here it comes. All right. So the second I go to the counter, You'll see here's an error. Uh, well, yeah, all right. Right there. Now, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna hit F12, so that'll bring up the um, web developer tools, right? And we'll just go to the console, and yeah, you'll see. Let's see, see here, right? 
all right right because the current platform does not support the render mode right and that's mm -hmm. what the error is what you're gonna what you're gonna experience if you don't set these to null okay um so yeah so that's what that class does for us cool okay yeah that makes sense okay um i'm gonna jump back to slides because i want to discuss uh some things with with folks watching and ask some questions and see see what you guys think um let me put you guys back up on the screen so i can see you uh wait where are you okay there we go so i can see you guys all right so you're making faces at me all right um okay let me go here so here's the the proposal right so First off, um, we have a couple issues that we're tracking for this feature. One is to add this solution template um, that we're, you know, we're talking about today um, for Blazor Hybrid and Web. And the other one is to fix in .NET 9 or, or at least change the behavior. I wouldn't say this is a bug. This is actually like, uh, it, it doesn't know what to do with the rendering mode, so it throws an exception. I think that's mm -hmm. not a bug, but um, it, it's not supporting the scenario we want. So um, it's a feature. We're going to um, ignore the existing rendering modes, those three different rendering modes. We're going to ignore those rendering modes um, in .NET 9 um, in the web view itself, okay, so that you won't have to deal with all of this, okay? All right. Um, so you guys, please go and comment on this. If you have your scenarios like, hey, I think this is going to work great, or I think this is not going to work great, please go to these issues and please comment um, and, and tell us that you know we're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. Um, the other thing that I want to ask, and hopefully this is like a, a good thing. Okay, the name. The name of the template. Naming is hard. I was in marketing for six years naming things. It's very difficult. I named Maui. Um, so here's our current, you know, create new project. That's an animation running right now. That's currently what you see when you type Blazor or Maui. Our current name of the, the .NET Maui Blazor hybrid app is the, the hybrid app, um, mm. right? The current name of the Blazor web app is Blazor web app, right? Or Blazor web assembly or Blazor server if you really want, but Blazor web app. Okay. So what we considered was a bunch of different version things of both of these types of apps, because we're basically just gluing this together. Um, so the solution template name we landed on is .NET Maui Blazor Hybrid and Web App. Okay. Okay. That's a mouthful, but uh, there's other considerations. If anybody else out there <laughs> has a better suggestion, please let John know. And so he can tell me right now. Okay? Well, I don't know about the suggestion so far we're getting. One, one says Habby. And the, the other says Blowy, so I don't know if we're getting any Blowy, there you go. <laughs> we're really good. Okay, yeah. Unfortunately, we're kind of like you know, I'm, I'm kind of a stickler for you know keeping within the branding, right? So .NET Maui is a brand, you know, right. Laser Hybrid is a thing, you know, the web is a thing. So um, that's what we're going for. If anybody can think of something better. Um, we can't. So <laughs> there you go. Um, and we'll obviously have, you know, tags and, you know, the right, the right, um, the right description and that sort of thing. So it shows okay. up. Okay. All right. The last thing is um, you'll notice that when I was showing you the, the, the uh, repository, I had the app name dot Maui as, as like, I had everything kind of Maui shared web web dot client. The proposal is to not say dot Maui um, for for the the I guess the hybrid app that that's the name that you put in the solution in the name like as your name okay and uh, we just thought that that would be better because that ends up being at the top always you know so everything else kind of follows down the other thing is that the app name in the Maui app is used as the um, app ID inside of the stores inside of the you know uh, Google Play and, and Apple stores mm -hmm. right so you might not want dot Maui and so you have to go and change that if you refactor your app it's not going to catch that so we wanted to make sure that like look this is probably the easiest way to go you can always you know change them there's a bunch of refactoring involved in that but um, this is what we're what we're going to go with. We're going to dot shared for the Razor class library, dot web for the Blazor server, dot web dot client for Wasm. Okay. So um, this one's, I think, less contentious, but um, I don't know. Like, we'd love to hear what the community has to say if this doesn't make sense or if it makes sense. Okay. You know, unfortunately, refactoring in Visual Studio is just when you name a rename a project, it's oh, just. Yeah. 
It's just a pain in the butt. So we want to make sure. Wait, like, <laughs> yeah. who's the get, who's the PM for refactoring? Anyways, like, like <laughs> I want to be able to rename a project and you know have it figure all of it out. But yeah, like until we have that, we really kind of have to be smart about how we how we kind of name these things. And um, for Blazor today, a Blazor web app gives you the the name of your app and then dot client if you're uh, have the WASM in, in there too. So we're just kind of you know saying web dot client in this case so okay does it make sense to you guys out there does the world think this is okay <laughs> yeah so i mean there's calm coming in i'll make sure you get all those for afterwards okay. um cool. cool well yeah. that's all i've got you know, i just wanted to you know kind of show off what we're working on related to the solution template done at nine and some of the problems we're trying to solve there and hopefully it makes it so that it's more discoverable so how people can actually get started gluing all this together so that they can provide you know a native devices and web target with like maximum code reuse okay so so my um my to to make sure i was paying attention right I can get a, an idea of what you're building in .NET 9 by going to the repo that you reference there. And I can look at, okay, this is what I'll get when I in .NET 9, when I do file a new project, bring up this new project type, and then um, it'll, I'll go through some dialogue choices or whatever, and then it'll yeah. create that for me. Okay. Correct. And I, I, the dialogue choices are very similar to Blazor app, right? You know, like whether what the interactive uh, interactivity mode is and where the location is, those will still be there. Okay, so um, mm -hmm. everything is the same except that you're starting with I'm building a hybrid application and a, and a web application, mm -hmm. and so it asks you about all the web stuff that you need, like normal. Okay. Okay. Um, and then it just creates that Razor class library and it glues it all together for you. Okay. Um, let me see a few questions here. So one that I think is related to that, <clears throat> why the need to create additional project with the same project structure if you only need to change a few things? Create additional project with the same um, not so I, the I think what I think well, let me try and guess at this, but you showed the simple case here where it's just running a weather a random number weather generator and a counter. But in real life, you're gonna be connecting to services and you're gonna be saving files and you're gonna be doing all this stuff. And so the different projects are gonna be maybe pretty different. Like the web app is gonna to talk directly to the database, whereas the client app's gonna call an API or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. That's true. And you can still do that. The only thing that this uh, template sets up is the client apps. It doesn't do anything like it, it doesn't it doesn't assume that you mm -hmm. are doing like data or have exposing endpoints. It doesn't do any of that. It's it's literally like the Blazor web app today. Um, mm -hmm. So like if you just create the Blazor web app, all it does is like give you this sample code. We'll have a checkbox whether or not you want the sample code or not, by the way. So like it, it will have nothing if you if you uncheck, you know, don't include the sample code. Um, okay. But we're not. Yeah, the you you can put, you know, like you can expose endpoints in your Blazor server project as you go, like so that you need to connect to data. Or you could create another project like a web API or a minimal API if you want to use that. So we're not dictating this whole entire structure of a you know production ready client server app. We are just creating the client itself. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Um, okay, question here. Any CRUD related samples? So like, so you're showing template examples, but yeah. then I think yeah, like what would a real app built on these templates look like? Yeah, I mean, like, like it would look this, like you basically follow along the Blazor, um, you know, learn stuff and you know, I mean, entity framework, pull in like whatever you want to do. Um, yeah. And now you're exposing endpoints and now you're calling the endpoints from the client. So I, I guess to that example, though, be, it would be interesting to evaluate, to understand more like, okay, what would like, like, you know, that restaurant app or something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. What would that look like to run on both client and web and all that stuff together? Yeah, and actually, like the crud part of it is probably the easy part of it, right? Like, yeah, mm. it, the hard, harder things to do are things when they're totally different on the platforms, like yeah. storage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, let me see. <clears throat> the project names make sense. Wondering, would you put business logic in the in the RCL project? You could. Yeah, I mean, like you could, or you pr create probably want to create another like models, you know, project where you just have the data only in there and use it, like reference it to the. It's it's up to you how you want to structure the you know the functionality of the data and the crud and that sort of thing, um, mm -hmm. because I would probably put my models in a separate project and then just reference you know on the clients um, and, and in you know the shared UI wherever I'm using them. Yeah. Um, I have another example on my um, get my GitHub like I have another repository called Beth Time Until, which actually shows some data, but it's all it's all local data. It actually shows local storage. You use Blazor oh. for the local storage. And it creates okay. it creates a models, you know, at least has a model. It doesn't it doesn't do entity framework and it doesn't it doesn't do any like data over the wire, but it shows how I structured a data model. Okay. All right, cool. Um, let me see. Can can you access native hardware like camera mic USB attached device using this? Yep, that's exactly what you can do. So then you would just in your web app you'd need to do different web app, you would probably need to or something. Yeah, yeah you would need to like do differently um but or uh i also in that time until i actually you can actually um you can actually multi-target your razor class library so that it only provides functionality for say android or ios um, in that example it creates ui only for phones so that you can take a selfie and access it the camera. And it does all that stuff from the Razor class library, but none of it runs on the web. Okay, nice. So then it's gonna, uh, I've got the link to that repo. So throw that up here. Yep. That's actually okay. the .NET conf talk that me and Alon did was this. Oh, cool. Yeah, okay. so people can watch that and it, we explain exactly how that worked. Nice, okay. Um, I'll take just a few more here. Um, Okay, if you don't set the interactive re render mode, how does Maui know to make your components interactive? Maui, it's always interactive. It's like, it's just like WinUI or- it knows, there's yeah, no there's like, no button and yeah. it does it, right? They're, like all clients are interactive. That's so, the nature of the, the native UI. Yeah. So the reason for this before, everything in Blazor was interactive and then we got the static server rendering, right? And so then- yeah. Then the render it's modes exploded and we had all these different cool yeah. choices on how we want to render components on the web. And Maui's yeah. like, okay. Yeah. It's right? always we're there. We're all interactive yeah. and that's that that's sort of like the, the scenario we're trying to, to enable for nine is so that yeah. you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So you guys will laugh at me, but you may have made the same mistake before too. I was going through and, do, and building apps with QuickGrid last week and like testing to write a blog post on it. And it wasn't working for me. And like, there were certain things I'm like, why isn't it not like, oh, this broke. And then I'm like, oh, I didn't turn on the render mode. Like I didn't mess with the render mode, right? And so it was it was just HTML. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. As soon as yeah. I, I, <laughs> so I, I, like a, I had a bunch of text to, or um, Teams messages to Dan Roth. I'm like, I think this is broken. This, I'm like, oh, sorry. And he's like, oh, I've done that too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it's really flexible the way that you can st structure your Blazor apps now using these different render modes, but it also kind of creates more complexity in the end too. So yep. you do have to kind of know how you're using these things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've got just three more started here. Let me see. Uh, does it support a JavaScript RPC circuit even in the event in the Blazor UI library? I don't know. I mean, if it's Blazor server, you can do the standard Blazor server stuff, I'm guessing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. OK. All right. Um, I don't know. McKenna, any thoughts there? How about this question? Um, yeah, not in particular. I, I'm, not, I'm not totally sure what they mean by like JS RPC. Yeah, but if, 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 they're, if they're talking about like a Blazor server, or sorry, like a a uh, signal R circuit or mm -hmm. Blazor server circuit. Um, like you can still use signal R um, in, in like any supported like Blazor scenario. Um, yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, like there's, there's always a browser for your JavaScript code. So, so you can still do that. Um, okay. If I'm All understanding right. what you're saying correctly. Yeah. 
Okay, I got just a few more here. So from Christopher asking, are there plans to make common abstractions across all platforms, including the web? Uh, an example would be a common interface for accessing the camera and web, Android, iOS, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, that would be basically providing another tar target. And we, you know, like a web target or something like that for Maui. And mm -hmm. that starts to open up a big complex can of worms on how we build things, how MS build works, what the target framework moniker actually is. Um, and then we have to add all the APIs into Maui itself. So that is not in scope right now. Um, this is, we want to see if this is going to get people where they need to be um, yeah. without having to like, we have thought about it, but it's just, there's so many different, I don't know, McKinnon, we haven't talked about it in triage, I think a couple of times, but this is just opens up like, oh, how would this even work? How do we build the thing? You know, that kind of thing. It's It, it crosses over multiple teams, way more <laughs> than just Maui and Blazor teams, right? This is like, oh, now we got to figure out how to actually like, like build this. How does MS build yeah. work? And, that kind of and then to maintain it forever too, like for yeah. all the various supported platforms, yeah. Yeah. That feels like something somebody might make like as an open source, you know, like basically like an abstract camera class or an abstract or whatever, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. Know? I mean, if you look at the time until I'm using Blazard, which is pretty cool how it abstracts the local storage for you on server and web assembly. So it handles kind of like these different hosting models for you. Those mm -hmm. are the sorts of those are the sorts of things I'd love to see the community do. Like, OK, we have here's a Maui, here's a Maui and web you know, your two implementations with the same interface and the same UI, and you can just pop that into your, to your app. Okay. All right. One last question I've got here. Just a second. Matt, and uh, what is the best way to get started with this? So um, go to that repo, oh, right? Get started. Yeah. I mean, read the readme. You can even do it manually, like if you want to get started with that. Like, I think the repository is kind of where you want to start. Um, obviously, as we get this into the product, uh, there will be documentation and all that stuff coming online um, like there normally would be as we get this in the box. We really are trying to target like the next the next well the dot uh nine preview four hopefully okay. we'll see if we can get it in yeah awesome yeah okay well uh great um some great great questions and feedback going on here um so that's that's exciting um so I'm, I'm I'm excited about this. I love the idea of building. I love web tech, of course, and like for me to be able to build desktop apps using web tech is like perfect. You know? Yeah, so. um, a lot of people are not really fans of XAML. Um, I didn't show it though. You can have XAML controls inside of the Maui app, and just like web view is just one of them, right? So a lot of people do do that. Like they are they're doing all kinds of fun stuff, and then you know like. Best practices on sharing state across the two, that sort of stuff is on the on the list for documentation so that we provide, you know, good guidance on how to build, you know, native plus hybrid. Like you know, you're in a hybrid app, but you have access to all the native controls and how do we how do you kind of manage state across the two and that sort of thing? Um, we're working on some more documentation for that. Great. Okay. Well, um, I think that's a great place to wrap up this um cool. Awesome, awesome demos and and uh, brave running all the stuff on your. Sorry, I crashed in the middle. Really bothered. Great, great recovery. That's impressive. <laughs> this is just proof that I can get my boss to approve a new machine. <laughs> there you go. And this, I mean, we originally way back we started .NET Community Standup. It's supposed to be. They're like hot demos, right? They're like things that might work and might not. Like this is, it's not supposed to be a super polished thing. So okay, cool. Thanks you pulled appreciate. it off anyhow. So Good practice. You. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. Thank you.